You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Great Escape After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424 256 1729. That's 424. 424- 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Great Escape After Show. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another Great Escape After Show. Escape from L.A. This music's already getting me psyched up to talk about this. I know, I'm very excited. It is called, yes, Episode 6, Escape from L.A. I, am, I of course, am your host, Phil Svitek, joined alongside, once again... Matt Fondelier. Yeah, thanks welcome, for having me back. Welcome back. And uh, poor Marissa did not get to watch this episode because she was engineering shows. But, uh, you know what, Marissa, if you have an intelligent comment based off of nothing, since you didn't see it, feel free to chime in. I will. Marissa, I think you're going to like will. this episode. It was pretty okay. good. I'm excited to hear it. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, Escape from L.A. It was it was a totally different feel. You know, we talked about it last time, you and I at large, about how last time it was very open. Um, you know, with with the whole airplane base. Now we're in a city, so I like that element of it. And uh, I didn't know what to expect going into it. You know, L.A. Yeah. When I hear Escape from L.A., all I could think about was the Kurt Russell movie, and this, of course, was nothing at all like that. Um, I was surprised at how much of the show was underground. Yeah. Because I feel New York is really, to me, more of like an underground friendly city. Yeah, LA, well, that would be like subways and things like that. Right. I mean, they said in the opening of the show that I guess there's this whole underground city of L.A. where all these buildings are interconnected. I've lived in L.A. my whole life. I did not know that. That so, makes me wonder. It, right? So, um, but, but yeah, that's very cool. Now, um, let's talk about the contestants. You know, I always like to ask you. Who did you pick to win? Um, all right. Well, you're not going to believe me, but I, I did pick the winner again. I've To okay. me, no question was it going to be the father and son team. Had to be them. They To me, the father-son bond, nothing can break that. That, yeah. to me, is a stronger bond than mother-daughter. I'm sure ladies out there will disagree with me. But uh, I just had a feeling that the father and son, I usually, unless you really don't get along with your dad, I feel like that's a sort of bonding experience that can get you through those physical challenges yeah and they they used to camp a lot yeah so and then the third team was uh spouses which you know those never those never go well never would i ever want to do i feel i feel like the spouses they they leave the show angrier they really do and it just it's gonna lead to divorce eventually not only do they not win a hundred thousand dollars but they're this much closer to a hundred thousand dollar divorce settlement yeah um I, I, I picked them, too. I picked the blue team to win. Yeah. Um, for the first time, I picked the right team. Nice. I did like um, Dara and Alex, and, and it certainly went and on. I, I, for me, I liked them even more and more. And then uh, Jevin and yeah, Tasha. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell if I misread my own handwriting. The guy's name was Jevin. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the, the girl's name was Alex, A-L-I-X, but I swear that they called her Allie. As if the X was silent in the way that it is nickname. like in Grand Prix. They call her Allie. Okay. Or it could be a nickname. That's just messed up. I mean, don't put an X there. You're right. It could have been a nickname. It could have been a nickname. Let's, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and say I hope it was a nickname. Sure. It's humiliating. Otherwise. Um, but what I like is, yeah, you know, I will say once again, just to say it, they're staying away from the friend and friend thuggish, hey, there's really no IQ here, but we'll win it anyway mm-hmm. team. So I like that. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about it more, but I'm really disappointed with the green team. Yeah, green team, major disappointment. Red team, the mother-daughter, endlessly entertaining. Yes. I mean, they're, I didn't think that they were going to win, but the entire time they were on screen, I could not take my eyes off. It was a train wreck that I could not stop watching. The green team could have won, though. They could have. Yeah. Um, just overall, they, they could have won. But let's, uh, let's get right into it. Um, they're taken into the tunnels, and they're bound. Now, for me, again, I really don't like it when escaping the detention center is really easy 
because it, it, then it kind of gets everyone going an equal footing. I like it when it's a little bit of a challenge like it used to be. I would say for the first three episodes, and then after that, it got too easy. I mean, you're dealing with duct tape. Yeah, I noticed that last week, or I guess it was really two weeks ago, the last episode, they were tied with rope, and this time they were tied with tape, which was way easier. But yeah. they were stuck in a cage, which to me, like being being like kidnapped and being stuck in a cage, that has got to be one of the scary situations. But, I can but think it was of. easy. Again, it was just too easy to figure out. There was no confusion on anyone's part, really, of like, oh wow, okay, there's a there's a hatch, and yeah. we just got to go <laughs> under it. Got it. But but they all forgot to get the map out. They all yeah. thought it was so easy to get out of there that they bolted, and all three teams realized that they forgot to get the crucial map out, so they all had to go back again. But yeah. that was pretty interesting. But again, I just go back to the first episode where it was like they had to find the key, and the key could have been a pillow. It could be. It, it, it was like it was like trying to find the map, you know. And it was that was okay. You had to. There was many elements to it. You had to find the key. Then I, once you once you had the key, it was tough to open the lock because it wasn't just like okay, here we go, we unlock it. It was there was that element to it. And then okay, thirdly, you had to find the map. Whereas this one was okay, we're out. Now where's the damn map? Yeah. And then, and then let's just move on to the next stage. Yeah. So, again, I, I think it makes it... Obviously, the show is much more compelling when everyone's kind of neck and neck. But I like that separation early on. Or the ability to be able to separate from the other teams early, early on. Mm -hmm. Now, are all three cages in the same room? Yeah. Okay, so all three of them are watching each other escape from their cages or opening the safe later on. Yeah. I just wonder like how easy it is to take hints from the other team. Like if for example, in this cage, if you're sitting there kicking the front of the gate and then you look to your left and you see a team dropping out through the bottom, just because you didn't get it first, you can instantly realize you now need to get the bottom of the floor out yeah. so you can catch up. Yeah, well that there's always that element. Okay. But I guess it's equal for all three teams. They all it have is. the same advantage or disadvantage. Exactly. Um and then stage one, uh, you know, it was, it was ironically, it was explained really well to us of how to be able to get the combination. And then yet, I forget how in that situation, your mind just goes totally elsewhere. And all three teams thought the same thing. And all three teams had a good grasp of what that concept could have worked. Now, to sort of rephrase what the task was, there was a calendar that had several dates circled, right? And then they had yeah. to kind of decide what the code was to get out based on what parts of the calendar were circled. Yeah. But it did seem like all three teams didn't even bother to turn the page of the calendar. Yeah, it was like, here's our calendar. Got it. Yeah. Just, you know, and it was, again, it was smart. It was okay. 1968 or what, you know, like, oh, got it. Yeah. Now, I wonder, I don't know, back in back in my day, going to like high school, you had the locker code. It wasn't as simple as turning it to the right, turning to the left, and then turning to the right. You have to go past the first number and then you can kind of turn it back to reach the second number. I don't know if your locker was like that, too. Do you it know was, what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I do know what you're talking So about. I just wonder if, like, they had the code, but then they maybe even had the right combination, but they didn't realize they're supposed to turn the lock past the first number. Because you could just be endlessly it, frustrated with that. It could. I mean, th there is a certain skill involved, as, as dumb as it is to say, with opening locks. It was tricky. Some. I mean, I remember, like, that used to be a thing. Uh, you know, you used to, some people, you had to open it for other people. Mm-hmm. Well, I just remember growing up watching like Nickelodeon shows where the teens would all be in high school with their lockers and I longed to have a locker. And then when I finally got to middle school, I was one of those kids that was like, someone open this for me. Like I could not figure out the combination. Yeah. Lockers really, you know, did not meet my expectation. Yes. They certainly take, yeah. uh, as in high school, sometimes it took a longer time to open the combo. Mm -hmm. And that's why most people are late as yep. they will attest to their teacher. Um, but... You know, this is this is where people really started getting separated, and um, I give the blue team credit right away. First off, they were the first ones out of the detainment zone. Then they were the first ones to realize, okay, here's where we got to go. Whereas the green team was going off somewhere. This it was it was you know it's not really storytelling, so it was a nice foreshadow for what was to come. But it, you know that was that was the story there night. They just didn't know where to go. Yeah, at a certain point, I even turned to you. I was like, are they doing a task right now? Like, I don't understand why they're so confused. <laughs> like, yeah. just walk down the hallway. How hard could it be? Yeah, especially, I, I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe we've lost the ability to read maps. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem that tough to me. Blue is where the land is, right? The land's always the blue part of the map. Thank you for that Arrested Development yes. reference. Try to get in as many as I can. Um, but yes, uh, so, and then eventually they all... You know, again, 
they all kind of caught up and congregated. And so, again, now they're back on equal footing. Mm -hmm. Which, to me, again, stems from the fact that they all had the same advantage with the detainment zone. Now, I feel like this is probably a good time to start talking about the green team's complete lack of effort during this entire episode. They were ready to quit even after they hadn't even started to go into the yucky sludge part yet. The guy was already like, if we get caught again, I'm going home. Well, they, at that point, they still hadn't gotten caught. So we're jumping a little bit. Oh, are we? Okay, my bad. Sorry. Um, but why don't we jump to stage two? Because the, uh, the, the the blue team goes off and they do their thing. And, uh, you know, um, it wasn't quite explained. They explained that it was sludge. And then when you looked inside, I was like, okay, could this really be S-H-I-T? Mm -hmm. I was hoping it could have been, but no. You know, I actually had the exact opposite reaction. I saw it, and I thought that maybe it was delicious. Like, what if it was really just like an Oreo cookie sludge? That would have been pretty cool. I mean, people um, were getting grossed out about it, but then, you know, maybe when you're down there, you get a little snack, a little energy boost. That's right there for you. <laughs> that, that could be. But uh, this, you know what? The, the blue team was, um, they're kind of like the tortoise of the story. Even though they were always first, they always kind of had trouble figuring out their tasks. They were breaking new ground at each and every time, um, and they struggled here, as we saw. But you know what? It, uh, I think it was Jared. He figured it out. And unfortunately, <laughs> I love how he got the key, but he threw it into the other one. Right. So they had to climb up this like slippery sludge wall and then down in through a sludge sewer and then crawl back out the other side, right? Is That that was the entirety of that task. Yeah. But yeah, that was funny when he, he found the key and threw it out and it fell right into the other side. Yeah. And there was a lot of good uh, good guard activity in this episode, too. They, you know, they're stepping up where it's a lot more organic, whereas before it was kind of forced, I, at least I felt, or maybe I'm just getting used to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you are right in that sense. And I did think, considering that this episode was, you know, Escape from L.A., to have the armored tanks going down the street, the helicopter spotlights, constant security, it was really just another night in Los Angeles. I don't think any other person would have thought twice. I know. Which was, we'll, I will definitely get more into it uh, as we talk about street level. But now let, let us talk about the uh, the red and the green team and as they get caught for the first time. Yes. Now, we saw the blue team expertly walk up that sludge wall and climb through the sludge sewer. Other than losing the key for a brief moment, they did that one okay. The mom of the red team could not make it up this hill. Like face plant after face <laughs> plant. Again, endlessly entertaining for, for me to watch personally. But again, I, w I will give her credit, whereas, you know, well, with the green team, they always had the notion of, all right, we're going to quit soon. It was always in their minds, whereas, you know, you know, I give Dara a lot of credit. As, as many times as she fell, she was like, you know, what? I'm not going to give up on this. Yeah. Even when she was like dry heaving, <laughs> she was still ready to keep going. Yeah. And, and here was here as, as you and I were watching, I turned to you and I said, how great would it be if the green team got caught because of the red team but the but the red team went into the sewer or whatever it is at at that point just to not get caught that would have been sh amazing strategy yeah but instead they both got caught which was it was a shame i really wanted just the green team to get caught they would have probably quit right then and there yeah because they were like okay well the red team caused all the noise and we got caught because of them that's bs yeah exactly but that would have been an amazing strategy like i wish she just she should just nose dived right in that effing thing if she had really committed to this game she would have done that and honestly i think that could have been a game changer mm -hmm. exactly it really could have i'm not even joking now i wrote down a soundbite that i swore that i heard when the mom and daughter were back in stage one both locked up the mom said something like um it's nerves it's the salmon it's everything <laughs> it is yeah they, they did, did she say it's the salmon because now i'm starting to wonder like, what did they have? Did they have sushi before they did this test? Like, how did that get into the final cut? <laughs> this salmon reference. That kind of stuff bothers me. It, I mean, I don't know if they were just making up that there's salmon in, in the mud. Like, I don't know if you felt some fishies. Or what, I don't know. But you also heard salmon, right? I'm not losing it. I, they had the subtitle. They had the subtitle. They had, not only did we hear it, the subtitle was there. Yeah. Spelled 100% as salmon. The fish. I just think the lesson to take away from this, because we have both discussed how we're going to be on the show one day. Don't eat salmon before you go on there. It's going to affect your nerves. Yeah. That's the lesson that I learned from this episode. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you gotta, you gotta, especially if you're not really an athlete, you gotta kind of eat mm -hmm. differently. Yep. Whereas, you know, me, I used to be able to eat like cheeseburgers before doing any physical activity. I'd be fine. Yeah. 
Not not necessarily good for me, but I'd be fine. Sure. Um, salmon wouldn't affect me. So oh. you don't eat salmon, go, I'll go eat right salmon. Through. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that, and then they escape, and then they kind of go through it. And this is literally that's that's when Green and Brad just work totally neck. Like they might as well have just been buddies. Yeah. Well, they both kept getting caught in the same stupid ways, yeah. and you know, again, another like sort of soundbite. The mom kept on saying like, "I can't do this. I can't do this." And I'm just thinking, you've already done it twice. We know you're having trouble in the sludge sewer, but you've proven to yourself, you've proven to your daughter that you can do this. So why don't you just shut your mouth and do it? Stop yeah. complaining that you can't do it. Well, is is it the fact that it's just harder the second time, or it must have been frustrating to just constantly? being caught in those underground tunnels and having to start over again yeah i mean it's it's like it, mentally it's it's the whole point of accomplishing something that you can't accomplish is so that you've accomplished it and you can sit and then therefore you never have to do it again mm -hmm. yeah and especially when activity is giving you this much trouble like that slippery sludge wall was especially damaging to both the ladies on those teams yeah but again just the testament to dara on the red team you did it yeah every time now, let me ask you a question. Is there a rule against altering your uniform? For example, going up the sludge wall, getting sludge all over your shoes. Now the bottoms of your shoes are all slick. Can you take your shoes off and try to take that wall down without your shoes on? I mean, you can, but your feet have even less traction. You're right. The shoes would add some traction, but I wonder if at a certain point, if they get enough the slippery stuff on it, you're just literally fighting an uphill battle. I mean, maybe. Um... You know what? You might as well, at that point, tie up your shoes and use it as a sling. Ha hook it. Have, you know, your daughter, a Allie, nicknamed, yeah. <laughs> and just have you pull up. So might as well just do that if you're going to go that far. Now you're thinking three-dimensionally. This is how this game should be played. You should take your shoes off and create some sort of abstract rope because that's what you would do in a real escape. If you were having trouble getting up a sludge wall, you would find another solution. Maybe they even have a belt. There you go. See? Right. Is that cheating, Marissa? All right, Marissa's, Marissa's throwing up Amazon now. All right, fair enough. All right, so uh, let's talk about Amazon because Marissa doesn't like our strategy. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about a fun strategy to keep After Buzz TV here and uh, at no cost to you, and that's through an affiliate program called Amazon. Um, so anytime you're shopping on Amazon, instead of going to Amazon directly, go to AfterBuzzTV.com first. There you'll find an Amazon banner. Click through that banner and shop away. And I feel like you should theme it to this show. If you're going to look for survival equipment or books on how to escape from places, this is the time to click through Amazon for that. Or you just want to go camping. Or just to go camping. <laughs> no escape necessary. There you go. Uh, so, yes. And uh, so click through that banner on AfterBuzzTV.com. We get a percentage. You get whatever it is you bought at no extra cost to you. And um, Amazon, they obviously must love it, too. So it's a win, win, win. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Marissa. We're, that, we're not cheating anymore. Yeah. That was just really encouraging just to hear the applause mid podcast. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's move on to street level. Yeah. Um, the thing that was off-putting, or, or I don't know if off-putting is the right word, but the blue team made it seem effortless in finding the street level. They didn't get caught by guards. They were very stealth in that regard. Um, so they made it seem very easy, and that set us up for the fact that, oh, this isn't too bad, whereas the green and blue, or I'm sorry, green and red, were, oh my God, can you not follow the map? Yeah, that's. I think that was the time when I looked over you and I was like, are they are they still competing in some tests? Because they were talking about looking for tools and stuff, and I was like, what? I don't remember having this explained to us, but yeah. maybe that's the edit, it's like within the editing of the show. You know, they edit, well, they're editing around for the drama of the show, so they're not really showing us realistically how long it took the blue team to get out because for them there was no drama so for yeah. them it's just easy just to cut to they're on the street level but maybe it really was an intricate underground tunnel they had to go through yeah i mean you know i'm trying to think how long it must have you know by the time everyone finished it was still dark outside whereas you know bef as, as in the early episodes you know it, it did get light mm -hmm. you know um in those episodes so i, I I really thought this could have been a whole episode where we could have gone till six, seven in the morning. That would have been really cool. Yeah. And I'll say that when the green team finally did come out and they were in some part of this underground garage that we had not seen yet, and there was a cop car parked over there, I actually started to wonder, have they stumbled into an actual crime scene? 
<laughs> like maybe they've just escaped and they've walked off set and they now think that they're competing, but they're actually, you know, going to get hunted down by LA gangsters. I just think that would have been a nice twist. I mean, me. if, for, for a street in LA, especially City Hall and things like that, I'm, I want to go there and I want to know which night is so barren. I mean, the, unless that cost them money to like section off that whole area, you usually see people yeah. at night in LA at least in a, a city. At least a couple vagrants or something. Yeah. So it was it was quite barren, but um, I'll I'll do some uh, recon work and I'll check it out. I imagine they have to close down a certain section to avoid like a vagrant coming onto the set. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're escaping from L.A., even though it took place in L.A., it didn't really feel as L.A. as no. It didn't. LA you really gotta is. have the homeless going up to you like, hey, you got you got some money. Like, dude, I'm trying to do a challenge here. Exactly. And here's I mean, this is toward the very end. But once they got into the Volvo and they had to drive around, why was there no traffic? If you're escaping from L.A., one of your biggest tasks is going to be to not blow your mind Granted, away. Granted, it's probably like 4 or 5 in the morning. Have you lived in L.A. and been through there 4 or 5 in the morning? There's traffic. There, There is a certain amount of traffic, yes. I'm just uh, teasing you. No, it's, it's, it's very true. It's very true. Um, so the blue team, again, they were just they were just very good at not getting caught. And that's, at the end of the day, you know, it, it it was really close, if you think about it, between the red team and the blue, and the blue team. And had the blue team just gotten caught once or the red team gotten caught w- once less, might be a different story. You're right. That would have been a crucial difference. But the blue team did have a pretty intense moment when they first got outside where the dad saw a guard and dropped their bag, like, what, four stories down? And then he had to do this crazy duck and roll move underneath the staircase to try to get the bag back before the guard saw them. Yeah. I mean, that that moment is when they clinched their victory because they could have easily been caught during all that time. And instead, they just ran around looking like badasses. Yeah. Well, they were very good at knowing the pattern of the guards. Mm-hmm. And they were able to use that to their advantage, which as... I mean, I feel like Rich Eisen doesn't say... He always says there's going to be guards patrolling, but he never says on a strategic strategy. And, and that one line, although minor, it can kind of dictate in your mind as a contestant okay, wait, they're going to do it in a pattern um, and it's going to be timed and all that. Okay, how do I use that to my advantage? Whereas the other times it's like, okay, are they just patrolling how they, you know, these are certain things that, although small, can make a difference if you really think about it. No, absolutely. And especially when you're on the street level and you're having to look at a map and trying to maneuver these streets, it seems like it would be really easy to get thrown off as to where the guards are. I want to know where these people are from because... I don't think they were anywhere near LA because they're like, all right, where, 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 there's the Times. Where's, where's City Hall? This giant glowing white building. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, stage three was technically on the stairs of City Hall, and they had to mop the floors to reveal this phone number, right? Yeah. Now, here's what I'm wondering. And again, this goes along with my similar question of, are you allowed to screw around with your uniform? Are you allowed to sabotage the other teams? Because if I got there first, I would have just hidden their water buckets. <laughs> Good luck clearing the code. That would have been that would have been fun. I mean, I'm assuming you would be disqualified, but I wonder if anyone's ever tried it. I don't think they. I mean, here's here's the thing for me. I wouldn't. I mean, I I will agree with our earlier point of you know what, let's use the shoes to climb and belts and things like that. But I wouldn't be so much into sabotaging. You know what? I like to win clean. Yeah. That's so, the difference between us, Phil. <laughs> nah, no, just easy. <laughs> well, if you get us disqualified, yeah. I'd be pretty mad if you and I competed. Let's just—I'm going to put that out right there. All right, fair enough. Um, but this is, you know, first off, we don't quite know the full time that it took Dwight and Jared to actually figure this out. But um, it must be pretty damn frustrating. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing with the safe code. Like when you think you have that safe code and. You're not turning the dial in the right direction, but you know that you're right. You must just feel like you're going insane. And if you've washed those tiles, they said they washed them like 20 different times and they still couldn't see the code. That's when you're just like, what else could we possibly do? Well, here's the problem. I think if you, if you notice the shots, they were pretty dark. Yeah. Like, okay, you, you know, you might as well put, might as well turn off all these lights and be like, all right, find the mics. Right. Where did that? And if you've never been there, how the hell do I do it? Exactly. Yeah, I was starting to think like if they 
had spent less time washing and maybe more times just with the flashlights up really close to the did tile. Did they have flashlights? I think that they did. Don't, I, didn't, uh, th was Did they have a cell phone at that point? That I don't. Well, yeah, they had to have had the cell phone. Because I would use the cell phone as like, all right, let's just let's use just the light. Yeah, nice. You know? Yeah, exactly. That would have been perfect. Or some phones have a flashlight on them. But yeah, they. Had, they uh, this was not one of those phones. Okay. Okay. No, it, did you see that phone? Yeah, it was a totally old ghetto like ten button one. Yeah, you're right. Um, but they, I remember that they did have the phones before them because the whole point was they had to punch that that phone number into a phone. Yeah. So they had to have the phones. I actually got confused. Because I thought they were talking about their real cell phones, and then I was like, "Wait, you can have your phone on set." I just went yeah. a whole tangent. So, well, luckily that wasn't the case. Thanks. But um, <laughs> you know, they they got to a point they were like, "All right, memorize the number." I was like, "Wait, wait, just just put it in the phone." Yeah, I mean, unless unless this is one of those weird weird phones that doesn't remember. Like, I don't know, maybe for the sake of the co co uh, competition, you had to actually remember. But like, if you just put it in there, dial it, then it's in your recent calls, and you'll be all set. Yep. Well, again, I think. You were really prepared to do this show. Like, we we're really thinking about this from an outsider's perspective. I'm sure the people who were on the show had never, they knew what they were getting into, but it's not like they. No, here's the, here's the thing. I'm um, with, I can say that with confidence. Here's the thing. Can I say with the calendar challenge, I would have gotten it right? No, I can't because there's no way, unless I was in that situation, there's, and, you know, before I had this knowledge of the competition, there's no way for me to know that. With cell phones and things like this, I'm actually pretty good at coming up with ideas and strategies on how to do that. So yeah. that I can say with confidence, I would have gotten right. So that's, not to that's what you would bring to the team in this real life great escape. You'd be the tech guy. That's what I do. I solve problems, right, Marissa? That's right. There you go. <laughs> you do. Um, and Marissa just bosses me around. Um, it's a good relationship. So, before we continue, I know she's about to throw it up there. Let's talk about iTunes real fast before we continue this competition. And the reason why we're going to talk about iTunes is, um, right now we're number eight on our top ten list, which is pretty cool for a show that, there you go. Wow. I mean, there's a real crowd outside right now applauding that, right? There is. Wow. That's Marissa and her friends in the booth. Wow. Um, but the cool part is, this, you know, when you think about it, The Great Escape, it's... Um, it's not that popular of a show on TV, you know, versus all the other shows that we're doing here at After Buzz. And so to be number eight, I'll take that as number one. Yeah, that's it's really cool. exciting, man. And uh, that's thanks to you guys uh, for downloading, listening, and telling a friend. And so we want to encourage you to continue that. It is the best way of, uh, of spreading the word of After Buzz via you guys. And then uh, secondly, just let us know on iTunes, rate and comment how we're doing. And, you know, we like to hear that feedback for better or worse. And, and we, we do try to change. And I do know that rating the shows and actually making comments does figure very highly into the iTunes algorithm. So the more you rate the show and comment, the more likely it is your show's gonna it does. pick up to the top. So that's one of the things that, like a year into the venture of AfterBuzz, we 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 started to realize because um, our iTunes guy told us. But before then, we all thought about it was just download numbers. Yeah, and then then we never solicited comments like this. And so for those of you who are like, why the hell do I have to listen to this plug? It's because of that reason. Because it's the only thing that we ask you for in return for this free content. So just please rate and comment. It helps our positioning with iTunes. And then in turn, we can do more and more shows. And hopefully, um, you know, continue Great Escape should there be a season two. Nice. Well, I so know I'm enjoying watching the show. It's pretty fun. It is. It is. And it's Brian Grazer and, um, and his partner, uh, cool. Ron Howard. So. Apparently my dad went to high school with Brian Grazer, but they didn't actually know each other. Anyway, that's a really compelling story. I know. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's move back on to um, so the green team. By the way, credit to the red team. Before they got onto street level, they hid in that closet. Oh that's, yeah, that could have been make or break for them. Mm -hmm. And they hid in that closet. That's what I'm saying. They were endlessly entertaining to watch. I know I've used that phrase a couple times, but exactly that was a perfect moment for that where there's a long hallway and there just happens to be like a, a security closet or a, a utility closet i don't think the other teams would have had the the mental strength to think let's throw ourselves into this into this metal cabinet and what i like is that it stemmed from arrogance <laughs> no because if you look at it on the um on the other times that they caught they literally um curled up into a ball thinking okay like like a little child would if if I put my I, my hands over my eyes, they can't see me. Right, and that that was their mentality. 
And so this just happened to be luck where, okay, here's an actual closet. Let's just go in that. We'll probably not get caught. And it worked out. Amazingly, it worked. And even when they were in there and they realized the error of their ways in that they could not see out of the closet, which you have to just feel like. You probably feel like the most brilliant person in the world when you come up with the idea of going in there. And then when the door shut and you can't see or hear anything, you start to rethink your strategy. Yeah. And, it's, and they got lucky when they opened back up. There was no guards. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I was really scared for them. They could have been like, right, are we clear? Are we clear? Okay. First off, the voices alone can give you away. And then B, the bursting out. Oh, there they are. Guards caught. Great. Yep. Done. And then, uh, of course, F the green team. This is when we lost all respect for them. I did. Just try. That's it. You know, it's you and your wife. Like, you can do this. Why? Because so you, you don't want to go through sludge? Yeah. Which, again, could have very well been Oreo cookie sludge, as we've established. And you know what? Really? You're there to try. Um, $100,000. For better or worse, you can look at it as a ton of money, an average sum, a little sum. At the end of the day, it's competition. Now, ultimately, they... They seem to have given up before they were actually found and had to give up because they were checking their map in the middle of the street. Like they just were both standing on the sidewalk looking at the map in the wide open and it was so easy for a guard to just shine a flashlight in their face. Like I think they had already <laughs> given up at that point because they're just not thinking correctly. And this it was the same woman who dove into the bushes three minutes earlier. And it, was, it was honestly, it was really, really disappointing. I mean, I just, I... I can't stand quitters, especially on competition shows. You're there, you know, you want, you're there for more than just the money. You're there for the pride. Like, I'm going to, you know, and if it was you and me, I'd say I'm going to kick these people's asses. Yeah. And I'm going to win no matter what it takes. And then I would take it very personally if I lost. Well, even, I mean, you're there with your wife. And your wife, you're telling her, let's just give up, baby. Let's just, we're not going to make it, baby. Like, as the woman, you're looking at your husband who's just volunteering that you guys quit. I feel like there's going to be some long-lasting damage to their relationship. And again, just try. It's the, the point isn't always to win. And, you know, it's weird coming from me, I know, because I would only want to win. But just continue further. Mm -hmm. Just do it. And none of the tasks were really that gross, that hard to do. I don't know. I mean, if they had to go through like a pit of scorpions, I could see like, all right, nah. let's just give this up. No, and it wasn't hot. It wasn't like the other guy who literally passed out from heat exhaustion. Yeah. I mean, that. The, I mean, what can you do? That's a, literally a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. So. No, very true. It, crawling we, through mud. Is that an illegal or the medical emergency? I don't think so. Although someone did manage to start bleeding during that, if I remember correctly, like just getting out of the cage. The mom was already like, I'm bleeding. I can't stop this bleeding. It was, say that? Well, that, they didn't make a thing of it. So. Yeah, they did not make a thing of it. Um, and then, all right, let's talk about inside City Hall. I, I had the comment of, like, these are all fake. The paintings. All oh, the paintings, right. Because there's no way that, you know, like, because when Dara and Allie went in there, the mom was just like, I'm cutting everything open. You know, so it's one thing to, to cut open a painting that you know is 100%, like, okay, that's where the cell phone's ringing. Versus like, oh my god, let's just cut everything in sight. Yeah, who's this Picasso? What? That's a fake name. Cut that open. <laughs> so, yes. Luckily, I'm sure, for the benefit of everyone. Oh, yeah. They had to have paid a set designer some money to get some fake paintings. Yeah. Now, when the phone was ringing and echoing through the entire building, did you not also think that maybe security guards would hear that phone ring and go catch them? Ironically, I don't think there were guards in the building. But that was mm. the perfect place to set up. Right. Cards. What well, was a really small room? I mean, if you just put one guard in there, no one's gonna not be seen in that room. Yeah, and it was it was um, most of the time where the guards are, it's dark. Whereas mm -hmm. this one was just heavily heavily lit. Right. So it would have been unfair to do that to them. Um, okay, so after they got the the last puzzle piece out, they now need to get into the car, right? We, the Volvo. The Volvo, which we saw a commercial for that was themed to the show. Of course, it was nice. Um, again, no LA traffic, which I found to be a little disappointing lacked the realism took me out i did not think they were escaping la at that moment but <laughs> um at the very end they had to find the secret door and climb up 14 flights of stairs um yeah. that that's a lot of stairs i gonna say it's a lot that is a lot of stairs um here here's my thing before we get into predictions um they could have they took this episode a lot more serious you know with the escape from la they made it very serious 
But it would have been fun if they just literally parried LA. Like, okay, you got to go from, you got to escape, you, you got to go from like the CAA building from your, you know, after you're meeting your agent to the set of Warner Brothers where you're shooting your movie. That would have been you awesome. You know, like just, just complete parody of like a, a typical day in LA. Yeah. All right, you got to fight traffic like that. You know, I get that's not necessarily the show. But it would have been fun to really see. They could have definitely made a whole like celebrity paparazzi theme to this episode. It would have benefited, I think. Just because it would have felt more intrinsic to Los Angeles. Because as we were saying, a lot of the episode was underground. You know, they got the street level in the second half of the show. But I don't really think of underground when I think of L.A. Yeah. Um, but certainly climbing up 14 flights of stairs, that is got to be. I mean, if you are so exhausted and you know that the other team is right behind you, and you really have to push yourself to get up those stairs. And that could have been one of those things. You know, they, they were so neck and neck. And, and again, it could have been a lot closer had so, someone been caught or not caught, where it could have been literally a foot race up yeah. these damn stairs. And all you need is one per. This is just one person needs to make it up there. Yeah, I mean, like, I think run. So. Run your ass and get that damn key to Rich. Yep. And we'll win. I'll stay down below. I'll set traps. I'll tie shoelaces together so they'll trip over it. Yeah, like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. You shall not pass. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, and then, you know, once they made it up to the, the top of the roof, I said this last week, if you win $100,000, make it rain. I don't understand why these guys aren't throwing the money around. Wow. You You're know what on I'm the rooftop. There's a lot of wind. It's not the real money. All right. I don't know. Maybe it is. I'm just saying, if I've won a race, I would like, just once in my life, a televised version of me making it rain. I just want that keepsake. Well, you should go on there and then make it rain. Okay, I will. Don't right. think I won't, because I will. All right, let's let's uh, let's get into predictions for next week. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. All right, so the episode, I forget, what, where, where are we escaping from? Uh, next week, it looks like it was something with a lot of pipes. I don't, I don't know exactly what me, it was. Let but me see. I'm going to check this out. I know I have it written down well, somewhere. While you're looking it up, I don't really have predictions as much as they are. Just other places where I feel like this show should go to. I don't think it will, but I'm wondering when we're going to start escaping from places that you would legitimately want to escape from. Like escaping from the dentist office. <laughs> escaping from the DMV. Escaping from divorce proceedings. I mean, that would be a, that would be a great parody. Um, we are going to escape from the power station. Um, power station. Three teams okay. attempt to escape from the belly of an active power station by maneuvering through its interior puzzle of pipes and pistons. Mm. Then it... Oh, what am I? Hold on. I was getting <laughs> a call. Uh, then we are going to escape from the swamp. Three teams try to escape from a Louisiana swamp while connected to a ball and chain. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So that's that's coming up August 19th. August 12th is the power station. That's cool. Um, escaping from a nuclear reactor. I, I mean, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, could we make it like Chernobyl? Yeah. You got Like, now you really got to escape from a power plant. Let's go. Yep. And you know what? The consequences are real. Yeah. You don't start over. You die. So, or just get massive amounts of radiation poisoning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, anyway, it's been fun, Matt, um, as usual. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for Marissa for running the booth. But Matt, where can they find you? Go to therewillbespoilers.com. Download my movie podcast. Are there spoilers? Yeah, every once in a while. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. And we know we can find Marissa at Marissa Movies. Um, right. Yes. And uh, you can find other shows. Um, I chime in on Breaking Bad every now and then and uh, some other, other ones. And uh, apart from that, tweet us at AfterBuzz TV to continue the conversation. Anyway, uh, from, on behalf of Matt, myself, and Marissa, we thank you. Yeah, thanks and for having next me. week. Thanks for having me on. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 